Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be taking a look at this. So this is another technique for creating fire. And as you probably know, if you've followed some of my other tutorials, I've got a bit of an obsession with this, uh, probably pyromaniac at heart. But this is a slightly different technique I haven't showed you yet. And hopefully you can take it and make something interesting of your own. So. The first thing I want to do is to point out that my project is 1920 1080. Uh, it's 10 seconds long and it's 24 frames a second. Right, the first thing we're going to do, which we should do as good housekeeping in all projects that we build, is to add a background color solid. So I'm going to bring that in. I'm just going to leave it as blue for the time being because I want to show you something else when I import my artwork. So I'm going to make a new group for that. And then I'm going to click on the import button, import the artwork. Now, as you can probably see, it doesn't have transparency. And for the purposes of this effect, transparency is what we need. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to come to filters, color, and I'm going to choose channel mixer. So right down here where it says alpha output, I'm going to zero out the alpha alpha. So we're going to kill its actual alpha channel. And instead, we're going to use one of these RGB channels. It doesn't matter which. Let's go for green just for fun. So there you go. Now we've got transparency. And that's a handy trick to remember. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this color solid into a new group by holding down the Alt or Option key and dragging it up like so. so this background here, I'm going to set this color to black. And then I'm also going to lock it. Right, this new colour I'm going to set as to red. Uh, and we're going to be playing with these colours later on, but something like that is a good starting point. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image mask. And my image mask is going to be this Dragon Master group. Let me just call that image source. And the reason I, I want to use the group rather than the actual layer is that we could then put anything into that group and the same effect, overall effect, would be applied. So let's drag that image source group into the image mask well. And now we've got our red solid cut out with our alpha channel. Let's select the image mask. Let's come to filters. Let's come down to stylize. And I want to look for min max. I also want to come to filters and add a Gaussian blur. So this is our starting point, but how are we going to create our fire effect, which is the animated part of it? Well, to do that, we're going to use the clouds generator. So let me make a new group at the top here, add object, generators, generators, clouds. Now the Apple clouds generator is, is a really, really poor fractal generator. We need to do a lot of work always to make it useful. So first of all, I'm going to set the horizontal and the vertical scale to 16 and I'll increase the speed to two. Now the important part here is opening up the gradient. So we're going to be playing with this gradient to get a much better fractal effect. So I'm going to select this left hand color here and click on that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring it up till it's around 80% here. Then I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and drag it. And then still with the Option key held down, drag it again, drag it again, and one more time for luck. Then I'm going to take this white one and I'm going to drag it in between those others like this. Again, I'm holding down the Option key to make a copy. So you see already that we've got a far more sophisticated fractal than we started with. And that's already looking a little bit more like fire. Actually, I'm going to add one more white one in there. So I'm going to alt drag that over there like that. And then I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to darken it down quite a bit. And I'll do the same with this one. I'm just going to drag the white ones in a bit towards it and then select it and darken it down as well. The other thing I'm going to do is increase that second layer strength to 0.75. And that makes a huge difference, as you can see. 
Okay, and one more thing. We're going to open up the offset. We're going to select the Y, right click, add parameter behavior, a rate. And we're going to set a rate of 0.125. And you can see that's moving the overall pattern upwards. Obviously, we can increase that if we need to, to make the flames rise faster. So I'm going to call this group Displace. And I'm going to move it to the back of everything because we don't need to see it. I'm also going to take that clouds. I'm going to call it small. I'm going to right click duplicate and I'm going to call it large because I want two different versions. And for the large version, I'm just going to increase the scale like this 32, 32 on both. Let's maybe just slow it down a bit 1.75 just, just so we can vary this a bit. And maybe we can move the position of these, for example, just so we're getting a different effect. OK, so how are we going to make our fire? We're going to do that by coming back to the image mask for this color solid and coming to filters, distortion and bump map. I'm just going to zero out the direction because I want this to be straight up and down. And then I'm going to take small. In actual fact, I'm going to take large because it's my first one. I'm going to take large and drag it in. And now you'll see that we've got our clouds displacing our image mask. And that's basically how we're going to build up the effect with various layers of this same approach. So I'm going to take this color solid and I'm going to duplicate it. Right click duplicate. Then I'm going to take that color and I'm just going to go for something a bit lighter. Probably that, maybe that's a bit too light. Something like that. I'm going to duplicate it again. Again, let's adjust the color. So what I'm do, wanting, wanting to do here really is, is just have versions that are increasingly bright, but along the same kind of lines. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Come down here to the original color solid there. Have I got enough? I've got one, two, three, four. That's probably enough for now, actually. Come down to this one here. And using my min max filter, I'm going to switch that to maximum. And I'm going to increase the radius to five. Actually, maybe even 10. And you see what that's doing is that's pushing it out beyond the others. I'm also going to take the image mask and here under the offset, I'm going to just adjust the Y offset just to push that up a bit push it over a bit maybe on. So really I just want to make it not line up perfectly with the other layers. So this next version up is probably good to go as it is. But what we want to do is we want to vary the bump map. So let's in this case use the small displace source. And you can see that's poking a little bit of that out from underneath. Maybe in this case, I, again, I'll come to the min max and choose maximum and just have a slightly larger radius. Actually, maybe even three. You can see what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to push these out all in a slightly different fashion. And again, I could come to my image mask and just adjust that so that rises up a little bit more. That's pretty good for that one. Again, we'll just do this with all of them. So this one, I think I might... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move this one behind the other two. Move it right to the back here. And I'm going to take the min max. Again, I'm going to use maximum. And let's just increase that radius till that starts poking out as well. And again, let's use small for the bump map. What I'm doing here, I'm, I'm not going to give you detailed instructions. I just want to give you a flavor of the overall process. And I'm probably going to make a complete mess of this because uh, every time I do this process, it just comes out slightly differently. But that's fine. I quite like the, the idea of that, that it's all a little bit organic and random. OK, so we haven't done anything with this one here. I think I might come to the min max and stick with minimum and have a radius of five. So that brings it in like that. But what I might do here is I might increase the a bump map amount to say 1.15. And then obviously that's pushed that down. What I want to do is bring it up like that. 
And again, let's, let's move this one right to the back again. Like that. Actually, that was a that was a bad call. Let's move it move it back up to the top there. So at this point, you're probably thinking I've taken leave of my senses, and this looks nothing like anything. Although it's got, kind of got an interesting sort of manga vibe to it, which uh, you know could be interesting in its own right. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to do something to make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to make a new group. And into this new group, I'm going to add generators, generators, clouds. Come over to the inspector. Just for speed, I'm going to select one of the preset gradients, and that is going to be Desert Sun, because it gives us these nice colors. I'm going to take this middle color here and bring it way down to somewhere like that. Just want to create a sort of dark boiling texture. And then to that, I'm going to add an image mask. And I'm going to use my image source as the source for the image mask. Drag that in there. And I'm going to set the blend mode of this to color burn. So it's a little bit better, but the thing that's going to bring it alive is when we add some glow to this. And you'll be surprised the difference it's going to make. So what I'm going to do is make yet another group like this. I'm going to put those two groups into it like that. So I'm going to select that group and make a clone. Make clone layer. This creates a new group with a clone in it. That clone layer, I'm going to come and add a blur to. So blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to duplicate that twice. The first layer, I'm going to set the amount to 128. The second to 264, so twice that, and the third to 512, so that's twice 264. So this top one, I'm going to set the mix value to 30. This one here, mix value to 60. So I think you can probably see the principle of that. And I'm going to set the blend mode to add. And now it's looking really quite a lot better, I think. Um, as I say, I, I wasn't entirely sure how this one was going to end up, but it's not too bad. I'm going to come to this group here, filters, blur, and add another Gaussian blur. And I'm going to set the horizontal down to zero, and then just increase this value here like that a little bit, just so we're getting some vertical blurring. And then I think what I'm going to do is take this group and Let's do some color correction on it. So color levels, and let's bring in the blacks quite a bit and get those whites pumping quite a lot like that. Ah, and that's really starting to work, I think. Again, it's a little bit manga, but I think you get the idea. Really what we need to do is to go in and do a little lot more work on just, just pushing these values around. Let's have a look at that image mask. I wonder if we can do anything a little bit better with that just by moving it. Yes, you, you see, you know, every everything we do here, we can just modify that look. This wasn't how I was expecting it to turn out, but I actually quite like this version. Quite different from my demo version, but still got something of its own. So obviously one way we could make a dramatic difference here is taking this clouds layer that we've put over the top and changing its blend mode. So at the moment we're on color burn, but if we switch that to say linear dodge, you can see we're getting a really dramatic effect that is completely different. I'm just going to switch back to color burn and I want to take that image mask there for the clouds and I want to add a Gaussian blur to it. And then I want you to watch what happens if we increase that Gaussian blur value. You can see that's just blending it all in a bit. And if you'll remember, we've actually got one of these by default on all of these image masks. And we could go in, we left it at the default for everything, but we could go in and just adjust those. And that will start to blend those into each other a bit more. You know, this is going to be the bit where you do your fun experimentation with this to get different results. One other thing I'd like to try is to take my dragon 
image down here in my source and add another filter to it. So filters distortion, and I'm going to use underwater. Though the default is much too much. Uh, so let's set the refraction down to say 20. Still a bit too much. Maybe just reduce the speed down to 0.25. Uh, I've done a bit too much with all my blurs. So let's just, just have a look at that without that, that blur on there. And you can see that's giving us this nice sort of undulating effect. That's pretty cool. And I don't want to, you know, pin this down to any one particular approach. Just wanted to give you a flavor of what you can do. So in the comments, I'll put a tidied up version of this project along with the source image artwork. So you can experiment with your own versions of this project. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again another time.